Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have what is the equivalent annual effective discount rate if the two year effective discount rate is 15%. And so here we're working with two different types of discount rates. We have an annual effective discount rate and a two year effective discount rate. And so let's write down what we know and then what we don't know. And in this case, we know that we have a two year effective discount rate of 15%. Now, what does that two year mean? Well, it doesn't mean that we have a semi-annual rate because it would be called a semi-annual discount rate, which occurs twice per year. Instead, this is a two year discount rate, which means it's going to occur once every two years. And so this is going to be a non-annual discount rate, which we like to denote with the letter B. And so in this case, B is going to be equal to 0.15 or 15%. And that is going to be a two year rate. And so then what we're looking for here is we want to convert this rate to an equivalent annual effective discount rate, which we typically denote with the letter D, right? That is our annual effective discount rate, which in this case we do not know. So I wrote a question mark to represent that. And so in order to find this rate, this equivalent annual effective discount rate to this rate, we need to know our conversion formula to move from an annual discount rate to a non-annual discount rate. And so the formula looks like this. We have D is equal to one minus one minus B, and that's to the power of M, where that M corresponds to the amount of times that B is convertible per year or compounded per year. And so in this case, we know that B is equal to 0.15 and we wanna solve for D, but we still need to know what M is equal to, right? And so we need to ask ourselves, how many times per year is this rate B compounded? Well, it's a two year rate. We said it occurs once every two years. So in a one year period, only half of the time that this interest rate occurs on has been taken up. And so our M is going to be equal to one half. And so this will be equal to one minus one minus our B. So we'll have 0.15. And then that will be taken to the one half power, right? Because this rate takes place once every two years and we are converting to a one year rate. And so only one half of the period that this rate is defined for is occurring in one year. And so now we can solve for D. We'll have that this is equal to one minus, and then we'll have 0.85 to the one half power. And then if we plug this into our calculator, we will find that D is going to be equal to 0 0.078. And that's rounded off a little bit, but this is approximately the value of our annual effective discount rate given this two year rate. And so that would be the final answer to this problem. Let's look at another example. So for our next example, we want to know what is the equivalent semi-annual effective interest rate if the quarterly effective interest rate is 3%. So let's try to identify what we're working with here. First of all, we know that we are working with interest rates, not discount rates. So that's one thing that we know. We also know that we have a semi-annual effective interest rate and a quarterly effective interest rate. So this is a little bit different. So far, we've only been looking at converting between different types of interest rates where one of them was an annual rate. But in this case, we have two non-annual rates, right? We have a semi-annual rate and a quarterly rate. And so this is a little bit different than what we're used to. How are we going to go about this? And so let's write down what we know and then what we don't know. First off, we're told that our quarterly effective interest rate is 3%. So I'm gonna write J and that's going to be equal to 0 0.03. That is our quarterly rate. And so in that case, M would be equal to four. That's the amount of times that that rate would be compounded per year. So just keep that in mind. And then we wanna find the equivalent semi-annual effective interest rate. And so that's going to be a different rate J. And so I'm gonna write that in a slightly different color. And that is going to be our unknown rate. And don't forget that this is semi-annual. And that means that it is occurring twice per year. So M is going to be equal to two. So now how are we going to do this? How are we going to go from a quarterly rate to a semi-annual rate? Well, there's actually two different ways we could do this. And I'm gonna show you both ways. I'll show you the first method, which is a little lengthy, and then I'll show you the second method, which will save you a lot of time if you really understand the concept here. If not, the first method is totally fine and will only cost you maybe a few extra seconds. So let's look at each method here. And so here's what we're gonna do for our first method. We are going to take our quarterly rate here and convert it to an annual rate, and then we'll take the annual rate and convert it to a semi-annual rate. So we're going to do this in two different steps, basically. And so if you remember our conversion formula from an annual rate to a non-annual rate, it is that the annual rate is going to be equal to one plus the non-annual rate to the power of M, and then subtract one. 
And so let's use this formula to convert from our quarterly rate to an annual rate. And so this is gonna be equal to one plus 0 0.03 to the power of m, which is four if this is a quarterly rate, right? J is a quarterly rate of 0 0.03, and then we're gonna subtract one. And if we plug that into our calculator, we'll find that I is equal to 0.1255, and that's rounding, of course. And now we can use this rate that we found, this annual rate, to convert to a semi-annual rate. And so once again, let's write our formula. We have that I is going to be equal to one plus that other J, and that's gonna be the power of M, which in this case will be two and then minus one. And so what we have here is a conversion from our annual rate to this semi-annual rate, right? This other J, this pink J that we have here rather than this purple one. And so if we plug in our annual rate, in fact, I'll do it right in this step here, we'll have 0.1255, then we can solve for J and that will give us our semi-annual effective interest rate. So if we add one to both sides, we'll have 1.1255 is equal to one plus J squared. And so if we take the square root of both sides and then subtract this one, we'll be able to solve for j in this case. And so if we do that, we will find that j is equal to 0 0.0609. And that would be our semi-annual rate given this quarterly rate that we started with. And so that was the first method, which required two steps. But there's actually a second method, and we're gonna call it method two, and this method is going to take a lot less time, but you kind of have to really understand what this formula is doing in order for it to make sense. And so here's what our second method is going to look like. We're going to have that J is equal to one plus the other J to the power of M minus one. And so what is this? Why can I write that? Well, if you remember in our original formula, we have that the annual rate is equal to one plus the non-annual rate to the power of the amount of times that this rate occurs in a year, which is the period for this rate. So think about it here, where we have that this rate j is equal to one plus this other j for the amount of periods that this rate occurs on this rate, right? This j over here occurred quarterly, so that was four times in a year, which is what this rate was defined with, a year. So if we want to find the semi-annual rate, we have to ask ourselves how many times would this quarterly rate occur in a semi-annual period? And we know that there are two quarters and a half, and so this m right here would be equal to two. This quarterly rate would occur two times in one semi-annual period, which is the period that this j is defined with. And so we would have that this is equal to one plus 0 0.03 to the power of two minus one. And if you were to plug that into your calculator, you would find that J would equal 0 0.0609, just like it did with the first method. And so whether you use the first method or the second method, you're going to get the same answer. So even if this didn't make sense, you can still use this method and get the right answer. Let's look at another example. So here we wanna know what is the nominal annual interest rate convertible monthly if the quarterly effective interest rate is 2%. And so let's write down what we know and then what we don't know. And what we do know is that we have a quarterly effective interest rate of 2%. And so I'll write that J is equal to 0 0.02, which is 2% in decimal form. And that is a quarterly rate, so we'll write that it is quarterly. And then we wanna find a nominal annual interest rate convertible monthly, right? And so that means that the amount of times that that nominal rate is convertible per year is 12 because there are 12 months in a year. So we wanna find I where M is 12 and that is unknown. And so how are we going to find this nominal annual interest rate? Your first thought might be to use this formula where we have J is equal to a nominal annual rate divided by the number of periods M but that's not going to apply in this scenario because this rate occurs quarterly and our nominal annual interest rate is convertible monthly, right? This rate does not have the same frequency as this rate does because this rate is convertible monthly and this is a quarterly rate. And so dividing your nominal interest rate convertible monthly by 12 will not give you a quarterly rate, but a monthly rate. And so this is no good. We can't use this formula. And so what we should do is first convert our non-annual rate to an annual rate and then use that annual rate to find this rate. And so we'll have that I is going to be equal to one plus 0 0.02 to the fourth power minus one. Right, this is our formula to convert from a non-annual rate to an annual rate. We just took it to the power of four because this is a quarterly rate. And so if we plug this in our calculator, we will have that I is equal to 0 0.08243. 
And so now we can use this to find our nominal annual rate. And so what does that look like? Well, we know that our annual rate, I, is going to be equal to one plus that nominal annual rate divided by M, which is 12, to the power of 12, and then minus one. And so if we plug in our value of I in this case, we have 0 0.08243, and there are some other decimals there, I did forget to mention that. When you end up plugging this in your calculator to solve later on, make sure you save this value. Otherwise, if you round off, you might get an incorrect answer when you finally solve for this value. So just keep that in mind when you do your calculations to really save your decimal values. Don't do a lot of rounding until the end when you have your final answer. But now with this formula, we can actually now solve for this nominal annual interest rate that we are looking for. And so let's solve for this nominal annual rate. We'll add one to both sides. And so we'll have 1.08243, and that will be equal to one plus the nominal annual rate with 12 periods divided by 12 to the 12th power. And so then if we took the 12th root of both sides, that would cancel out this power of 12. And so if we did that, we would have 1.08243 to the 1 12th power, right? The 12th root of a number would be taking it to the 1 12th power, and that would be equal to one plus the nominal rate divided by 12. And so if we take this to the 1 12th power and then subtract one, we will have that 0 0.0066227 is equal to the nominal rate divided by 12. And so then if we multiplied both sides by 12, we would finally have that the nominal annual rate convertible monthly is equal to 0 0.07947. And so that would be the final answer to this problem. We took a quarterly effective interest rate of 2%, converted it to an annual effective interest rate, and then used that to find our nominal annual interest rate convertible monthly. Let's look at another example. Next we have, if the annual effective discount rate is 5%, what is the equivalent semi-annual effective interest rate? And so in this case, we have an annual discount rate, and we're looking for a semi-annual interest rate. And so let's write down what we know and what we don't know. So we know that we have a discount rate, D, and that's equal to 5%, so 0.05 and we're looking for a semi-annual effective interest rate, which is a non-yearly rate, so we're looking for J, and we don't know what that is. And so in order to find this J, we're gonna have to do what we just did in the last two examples, which is find a different rate first, and then use that rate to find this rate, because we don't have a formula that directly converts from D to J, at least not a very nice one. And so what we're gonna do is take two separate steps, to get to this rate. And so first what we'll do is convert this discount rate to an annual interest rate. And so that formula looks like this. We have that D is equal to I divided by one plus I. And so in this case, we wanna solve for I, and so we're gonna plug in our discount rate, and then that will help us find what I will be equal to. And so I have that 0 0.05 is equal to I divided by one plus I. If we multiply this quantity to both sides of the equation, we'll have that 0 0.05 times one plus I is equal to I. And then if we distribute this through the quantity here, we'll have 0 0.05 plus 0 0.05 I, and that will be equal to I. And then we'll continue that up here. If we subtract this term with I from this term, which would be one I, then we'll have that 0 0.05 is equal to 0.95i. And so then if we divide both sides by 0.95, we will find that i is equal to 0 0.0526 and then some more decimals. And so this would be the equivalent annual effective interest rate to this effective annual discount rate. And so now we can take this rate and convert it to J. We have a formula for that. So we'll have that I is equal to one plus J to the power of the amount of times J takes place in I. And so J is a semi-annual effective interest rate. Forgot to write that, but that means that M is going to be equal to two. So we'll take that to the power of two and then subtract one there in our formula. And so in order to find J, we'll plug in I, we'll have 0 0.0526. Once again, make sure you save that value in your calculator so that you don't get any rounding errors. And that will be equal to one plus J, and that will be squared minus one. And so then if we solve for J, we'll have that 1.0526 is equal to one plus J squared. And so then if we take the square root of both sides, and then subtract one here, we can then solve for J and find that J is equal to 0 0.02598. And that would be your final answer. That would be your equivalent semi-annual effective interest rate given this effective discount rate 
of 5%. Let's look at one more final example. So here we want to know what is the force of interest when the effective annual discount rate is 4%. And then we have a second question, but we'll get to that after we answer our first one here. So we want to find the force of interest and we have an effective annual discount rate that is 4%. And so we know that D is equal to 4% or 0 0.04 in decimal form. And we want to find the force of interest delta T. And so thankfully we have a formula for this. We know that in the case of a discount rate that delta T or the force of interest is equal to the negative natural log of one minus the discount rate. And so in this case, delta T would be equal to the negative natural log of one minus 0 0.04. And so if you plug this into your calculator, you would then find that the force of interest delta T would be equal to 0 0.0408. And that would be your answer in that case, given an effective annual discount rate of 4%. But now our second question asks us what that force of interest would be when the monthly effective interest rate is 0.1%. And so that's a non-annual interest rate. And so now this is going to be J and that is equal to 0.1% which would be 0 0.001 in decimal format, right? If 1% is 0 0.01, then 0.1% would be 0 0.001. And then we still wanna know what the force of interest delta T would be equal to. And so in this case, we don't actually have a formula that goes directly from a non-annual interest rate to the force of interest, but we do have one from the force of interest to an annual effective interest rate. And so what we'll do is we will convert this rate to an annual effective interest rate first, and then we'll find our force of interest. And so once again, we're gonna use this formula. We have I is going to be equal to one plus 0 0.001, and that will be to the power of how many times J occurs in one year, which in this case, this is a monthly effective interest rate. And so that means that our amount of periods will be 12. And then of course, we need to remember to subtract one. And so then if you plug this into your calculator, you'll have 1.001 to the 12th power minus one, you will find that the annual interest rate is equal to 0 0.012066, and then there's some more decimals. And then we can use this to find our force of interest. And so that brings up our other formula, which is that delta T, or the force of interest, is equal to the natural log of one plus the annual interest rate. And so in this case, if we plug this value of I into our formula here, remember to save this value in your calculator, right? Don't round off. Take this whole value and plug it in here then you would find that the force of interest delta T would be equal to 0 0.011994. And that of course is rounded just like our other answer over here was. And so this would be the final answer if we had a monthly effective interest rate of 0.1%. And so that's it. That's all the examples I had for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.